Well, I have a pile of mail again, so I guess it's time for another mailbag. Let's get started. Just going to start with this uh, beige one here. And I ripped the label off, but there wasn't any more information on the label. Also, if you see, this is razor thin, so I really don't know. I have something like here. Let's check it out. And these are integrated circuits, and they are face-to-face, -face, so you have to spread them out to see what they are. So the mystery ICs in this case are the 74HC14D, which are uh, Schmidt triggers. I think it's a, a six Schmidt triggers, in fact, and they're inverted Schmidt triggers. And they are in SOP14 format. Now, if you don't know what any of this meant, um, well, you're not the only one. So, a Schmidt trigger basically is when you have a um, variable signal, like let's say it goes from low to high, and you want to, I don't know, clean it up. You want to make sure that it's, once it's past a certain threshold, it latches, and then when it goes below a certain threshold, it latches the other way, so on off. It's basically when you have a lot of noise or bounce in your signal, but you want to clean it up, you can use a Schmidt trigger. Now Schmidt triggers are great for uh, MOSFETs, for example, because MOSFETs don't like their gates being pulled high and low very slowly. Uh, the Schmidt trigger will do it in a fraction of a second, so you can use a relatively slow microcontroller or relatively slow op amp or something to switch a signal if you pass it through a Schmidt trigger. So this is uh, 20 of them, so I have the whole uh, kind of like bandolier, and I had to prop them up higher because these are tiny, because uh, SOP14 are very small. This is the only size I could find on AliExpress, so I had a kind of an idea to put it in a breadboard. Let me show you what I meant. So I recently had a hard drive explode, and so I'm not sure if this one was on one of the mailbags that were... Uh, to be edited on that hard drive or not, but here we have a, a SOP14 to breadboard adapter, and I think there is on the back here, yeah, there's S SOP, so even smaller, but hopefully this will fit on these chips, because uh, I believe these are SOP14s as well, so let's give that a try here. So the, the idea is you'll solder this onto this, and then you put pin headers through here, and those will fit in a breadboard. So that is the theory. Now, believe it or not, I did order these before Julian Eilert started his whole uh, crusade on um, surface mount devices, but uh, it did take longer to come in. And also, Julian um, made me believe that I would be able to do it too. And this is taped, isn't it? It is taped. Okay, so let's see. Here it goes. Peel this back. Grab this. These are tiny. Okay, and pin one will be up here. So I need to take the pin one that has the dot. Just kind of align it on there. It does look like it fits. Working at the most magnification I can get. I had to prop you guys up on this box. Yeah, that looks like it fits. So this is the plan. I would solder that down. Uh, I did order some uh, solder paste because I do have a hot air rework station. Here's the tip of it right here. There we go. And so I would try to solder that down, then solder in pen headers, and then work with these on the breadboard. But if I'd ever go to building a circuit board, I can always use these uh, SOP14 pack packages. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Let's check out what else I got. So next up is this one. This one says cut pliers on, so I know exactly what these are. There we go. I've actually 
been waiting a long time to buy some of these, and I'm not too sure why. Okay. The Zeron, made in the USA. Uh, I can guarantee you that these are not made in the USA. In fact, I wonder... No, I don't think so. Anyways, I'm, I guarantee you, I promise you, they're not made in the USA. Pull these out, and these are flush cut clippers. So I've been using kind of these things before, like little tiny side cutters, but flush cuts are supposed to be able to cut component legs, and they're supposed to be completely flush with the bottom of the circuit board so it won't have anything sticking out. So make sure if you buy some of these, um, to be aware that these are going to be cheese grade. So they're going to be terrible for like durability, but these were really cheap. Let me show you what I mean. So let me see if I can show you an example of how these work. So I'm just going to trim the very tip of this with the new pliers, and I'm going to cut the other end with the side cutters. I'm going to zoom you in here, and I'll try to show you what I mean. Okay, you're going to have to be patient with me here. This here is the side with my diagonal cutters. If you can see, there's an extremely pointy tip, very sharp. I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to try not to move my arm too much because there's a focus here. If I spin this around, you'll see this one cut with the flush cuts is completely flat. So there's no pointy end. And on top of that, if you look here, you'll see see the grinds here? The grinds here mean that when this shut like that, you'll notice that it's entirely flat. Whereas the side cutters, you'll notice, see there's a blade there. You see there's a kind of like a an undercut here. So when I close this, there's a groove. I don't know how I can show this the best. See that groove in there? So these cut pointy, whereas these cut flat. Now, you should only cut component leads and wires with this. If you cut anything harder, like some sort of steel or any other kind of hard metal, uh, these are going to nick and they're going to be broken basically they're going to be useless um, these were very cheap they were a dollar eighty Canadian from Aliexpress so I recommend you get a pair or if you're impatient I know a lot of impatient people uh, get two or three because at that price if they get all messed up not that big of a deal throw it away get some more next up will be these two and I say two because they are related to each other this one here says M5 stainless steel hex and this one here says fasteners. So I'm pretty sure they are very much related to each other. Cut this one, cut this one. Oh. There's just an empty bag in there. That's interesting. Oh, and they are not secured. What about these guys? No, these guys are in the bag. Cool. Let's have a closer look. So what these two are, they're not quite related as much as I thought it was. I thought they would be bolts and nuts, but turns out it's bolts and bolts. Uh, these are cap head bolts with the Allen. And these are M5, so they're 5 mil in diameter. At least I think so. five mil in diameter and these are M4 they are four mil in diameter uh, yep M4 and but these have a Phillips head number two Phillips and what I wanted the M4s for was this so I have these aluminum extrusions and inside these aluminum uh, extrusions are these channels and these inside these channels 
fit these little specialty nuts. They have a weird profile shape, see that? And that fits just perfectly in here. So what you do with that is you use your whatever you want to affix to your rail. So in this case, this 90 degree elbow, I'll put it the other way actually, so there's no shadow on it. And then you take this and you pop it in there. Now this is a little bit harder to do because it is actually stainless steel. I wanted stainless steel purposely because it doesn't rust because although this is for the 3D printer it won't always be or it won't only be for the 3D printer. So I'll just thread that in and immediately we have two issues. So here's the first issue. Okay, That's back down it's touching the aluminum extrusion. I can't move it back and forth. Okay, See I can't push it. But this is still loose. So this isn't being clamped down to the extrusion. So that's a problem but uh, and also the other problem is that this head here is too small. See I can kind of lift that off like that. So both those problems can be saved by this uh, or remedied by the same device which would be a washer. So you put a washer underneath here so the load is spread in a bigger area and on top of that add some thickness so that they'll be able to clamp to each other. That's pretty good. These are 10 millimeters long, these are 14 millimeters long. These are from AliExpress and I forget how much I paid for them. I can't find them in my account. Um, I may have used the wife's account for these. But uh, these were from eBay and I got these on an auction so it's $2.20 Canadian for 50. These are, I believe there's 50 in here. Looks about right. And these are parts for the 3D printer. All right, and time for one last one. And this one says solder mud paste. So I don't think it should be any surprise what's in here. And of course, it is solder paste. Let's take a closer look. Nothing too complicated here. This is just about 10 cc's of solder paste in a syringe. Um, now it's 63% uh, tin, 37% lead, and it should be uh, suspended in some sort of flux. I do see some bubbles in there. But the cool thing about solder paste is really just solder, like, like I mean, regular solder like this, which is sort of put in these tiny little balls. They say here um, 25 to 45 micrometers in diameter. Now they put them in these syringes. I think you can unclip, yeah, you unclip these. You can look right down that syringe and uh, you could put a device in there to squeeze it, but if you watch uh, Julian Eilert's channel, he's had quite a bit of trouble getting his out of the tube. I'm just gonna open this up, yeah, so it's threaded um, has threads on the front that accept some uh, tips. I have tips. I have bought syringes, but once I ordered those syringes, I've noticed that Julian can't really get this to flow. So I'll have to see what what I come up with, but very likely I'll go very low tech and probably just take a, a tiny amount on a. Uh, I'm not sure actually, but probably like spread some out, take a tiny amount uh, with some tweezers or something and apply them like that. But uh, if Julian wasn't able to, I'm not sure what my odds are. You never know till you try, I guess. So this is one of the syringes I was talking about and these are the tips I was talking about. So these tips, let's see if I can take out kind of like a reasonable size. So here's a reasonable size opening. The OD on that one is 1.27 mils. And that threads into the syringe like this. Right? But the point would be to thread it onto the end of this syringe. Let's see if it fits first of all, see if it's universal thread. It is. And then figure out a way to push stuff out of here. Again, I'm weary because Julian had a lot of issues with it. Tell you what, 
I'm going to take this syringe. I know it's clean. Take this syringe here. I'm going to try to draw some out. This will probably be a disaster, but that's why you guys are watching, right? So let's see here. Just poke that in there. I'll hold this. Creating a large vacuum. Oh, something let go. Don't know if I have any solder actually in there. Let me just get a board to see if I can put it on. So here's the big moment. I think I've got some inside the plunger here. I'm going to try to put some on here. No dice. So I got a very tiny little bit on top of this you can probably see there on my finger maybe not even but I don't think I got any really inside I'm gonna try to blow it out quickly no oh, I got some very little though and yeah, this doesn't really stick yeah I feel like uh, my problems are going to be the same as Julian's I'm also going to have to go wash my hands pretty much uh, as soon as I can because this is 37% uh, lead. So it'll be interesting to see what I can do with this in time. Well, I was just taking the tip off and look what I found there. That is like, well, I guess it looks like a turd or something, but of solder paste. So I did manage to move some from here to here. It didn't go back through, but that's promising. I don't know if you can see that, but right there. Any result is better than no result, I guess, right? But yeah, that is solder paste right there. And there we go. Now we have solder paste on the board. Heck, I wonder if I could even solder with this? Should I get the hot air rework station going? Maybe I should try to squeeze some more out. All these questions. You know what? I think I'm going to try it. I think so. Let's see if we can get some more out here. Very small amount of solder paste there, but I'm just kind of using my knife as a scalpel or as a putty knife, I guess. Moving it across. I'm trying to get a little bit more. This is totally not the right way to do this, by the way. I'm just, I'm just giving this a shot. Okay, so I'll put a very thin layer like that. Whoops, shouldn't scrape it all off. Okay, I'm gonna put some like here. Okay. I'm going to put this away and then I'm going to try to solder this. Let me set you up this so you can see that. So here's the situation. I did a very craptacular job of spreading solder paste here onto this uh, SOP14 to breadboard adapter. I have this SOP14, um, I think it's a hex inverting Schmidt trigger. I have my tweezers here. I've got my hot air rework station set to 350 degrees C and we are going to give this a try. Now I'm considering just maybe squeegeeing just a little bit of the excess off like this or at least trying to reposition it into sort of the middle portion. If you're looking to this video for guidance 
I can't help but think you're doing it wrong. But this is how we learn. Okay, so I'm going to set this up here. I'm going to take this, whoops, and drop it, of course. And I'm going to set this up onto here. Pin 1 is over here. Pin 1 is uh, denoted by this circle there. I need to get in closer to take a look at this. I have a piece of solder here. I'm just going to take that off. I'm just going to take the kind of the there's solder here. I'm going to scrape that off because I'm going to need to solder pin headers if this works. And I'm not saying it's going to work, I'm saying that it might work. Okay, so I'm going to pull this kind of like here. Okay, I'm going to make sure it's aligned one last time. All right, so I have my airflow set really low. Um, it goes like 1 to 8, and I'm at a 3. So 350 degrees, I have a square tip. Pull it out of its cradle. So this is what it looks like here. I'm going to wait till it comes to temperature, which is almost now. Okay, now I am doing this on cardboard. But it should be okay either way. Oh, I can see the little, there's a little splash right here, and it's actually bubbling. So I'm, I'm assuming that we have flux in here. I hope you're not seeing the lights flicker, because the lights are flickering as the element turns on and off in this uh, rework iron. So hopefully, the goal is to get it hot enough that it just sticks to the pads by itself. Oh, that, that sort of looks successful. I'm going to get it extra hot, just in case there's balls of solder stuck underneath there. Okay, I'm going to put that away. And we're going to have a nice inspection here. So, it actually looks pretty good. Those all look sort of flowed. This is really hot, mind you. Whoops, yep. Gonna have to let that cool. So I will bring you back when that's cooled down. So it is cooled down now, and actually I think it went pretty well. There's a couple that have, I guess, a light sprinkling of uh, solder but it still worked like if you put a really thin layer of solder paste and just kind of drag it I think even using like a um, I don't know a, a plastic card or something or like a spudger or a guitar pick you might be able to get really good results but yeah I am happy with that this is my first time working with solder paste and it went really well excellent and this assortment of items, including this, is today's mailbag. Thanks for watching.